Hi guys, I just wanted to make a quick video now that I've reached the halfway stage in my 1000 km challenge. Just to thank everyone really that has sponsored me so far, I'll give a quick recap of what's happened and a look ahead at what's to come. So yeah, first things first, thanks really. Um, it's been just shy of two and a half grand raised so far, which is incredible. The response I've had is been quite surprising really, I mean I've obviously I've had quite a few local people, people I went to school with sponsored me, but I've had people sponsor me from America, Canada, the response has just come from all over the world, it's been, been quite a surprise, um, I think special mention is to go to Matt and Jenny at Bunties, and really to all the awesome guys at Brentfall who have been very, very sort of generous and supportive this year. Okay, so the, uh, the year got off to an interesting start. Um, January the 1st, I was set to run New Year's Day 10k in Cleeports. Um, a couple of days beforehand, I got half of us. Um, got the squits. Um, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. Um, so, 48 hours before the race, all that really it was two Weetabix, maybe a banana, a little bit to drink, but that was it. So, I was in two minds where to actually run the race, really, because it wasn't the best conditions, um, but obviously currently <laughs> pull out my first race, so. I think, I mean most races I've kind of treated them quite seriously, really, just running as fast as I can. I mean, I feel the more I put into it, the harder I push myself, the more worth I get out of it, the more I enjoy it in a way, I guess. Um, sometimes I feel I've probably pushed myself too hard, but I think, you know, if I'm just getting around as fast a time as I can, setting new PBs, I enjoy it more. People be more impressed, sponsor me more money, that kind of thing. Um, I've had a couple of ideas of running, running in fancy dress later in the year, um, and really put too much more thought into that yet. There's kind of the half idea that I want to do the York 10k dressed as full Viking costume, Mainly just because I want to do that anyway, um, but also because it'll add quite a bit of a more challenge to it, get more attention, that kind of thing. Um, a few other general ideas I can suggest, but when, where, how, and what is still very much to be determined, really. Um, there's a few other things, like there's the there's a 10k on the Sunday of at Bloodstock, which is the festival that me and Jenny go to every year. Um, it does mean missing. Possibly one of my favourite bands that are going to be there, which <laughs> is, is quite frustrating, really. But I think, I think, still think I'm probably going to enter the race anyway, just to, just another race to do. Um, the sort of the organisers there, the Rock Society, have been very, very helpful and generous in saying that they'll help out, try and raise awareness where they can, potentially hold a raffle, that kind of thing, to try and raise more money whilst I'm there. So I mean, it'll, it'll seem like a holiday in a way. But I'm also going to be racing, and I'm also going to be you know, doing a little bit to raise awareness. So there is no no free time this year. Uh, that's one thing I've really discovered. I mean, every weekend I've been taking up the races. Every spare time when I'm not at work has been taken up, drumming up support in some way, looking for races, um, that kind of thing. So it'll be nice when the year's over. Mainly, obviously, because of the, the sense of achievement, but also because it means I can just do nothing. Kind of lost what that feels like, because I mean, obviously there's all the stuff I've just mentioned, and Jenny kind of needs a little bit of care here and there. So the the little bit of free time I generally have found this year, which has been very very few and far between, I just grabbed with both hands and enjoyed it, mainly by doing nothing. There's been there's been quite a lot of highlights this year, really. Um, most most of the races have all been all been great. There's been a couple which, for various different reasons, whether I didn't prepare or or the weather or something like that, they weren't particularly enjoyable. Um, but I mean, I've, I've had sort of contact from people all over the world that have just been thanking me for what I'm doing. Just you know, it's it's been quite been quite amazing, really. Just to, just I mean, I'm obviously I'm, I'm just doing it purely just for Jenny, really. Um, I don't pretend that I'm not, but it is nice to know that I'm touching people out there. 
Not in a weird way. But, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of races, highlights, I think there's been quite a few races this year which has been completely new. Um, sort of Stamford, St. Valentine's Day, 30k. was probably one, at the time of the year, it was sort of the most difficult race that I've ran. Um, it's the first time I've done it. It's a very, very popular race, and afterwards I sort of found out why it's challenging, but brilliant, really. Um, a few others that I've just, well, yeah, the first time I've done them, do them again, really. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the best race this year, so far at least, um, I think it definitely has to be the obvious one, really, in the London Marathon. My dad and my brother have both run it a couple of times, at least before, so I've always sort of been a bit jealous of them. Um, it's always been a race that I've sort of had my eye on when I started running. Never really thought I'd be able to do it when I started off. Um, but yeah, now, now I can say I have. I mean, as, as for the actual day itself, it's far, far harder than, than I was prepared for. I'm not really one that copes with the heat very well anyway. But three, four months of just training in atrocious, freezing cold, snowy conditions. So then have the biggest race of the year be in sort of 20, 20 degree heat. It, was, it wasn't sort of the best, <laughs> the best scenario for it, really. Um, but, I mean, it's been said before, everyone says it, the crowd support at the race was just phenomenal really and obviously it, it took place a few days after Boston so everyone kind of there's there's sort of anxiety around the entire race anyway for a lot of people but I think that it pulled people together a lot more than than it would have done normally um, but I mean as for me there's it it sort of showers all throughout the route where well it's just sort of yeah just showers really um, to cool you down I was, Making a beeline for them every possible opportunity just, just gets too hot, and then 20 miles of kind of just completely fell apart. As you can see here, um, yeah, running hurts, but the feeling that I got when I crossed the line it was just unparalleled to anything I felt before, certainly whilst running. I was in pain, so so much pain, I could barely move. Um, but I've done it really and the sort of ecstatic feeling I've got at the end kind of took quite a few days to pass um, kind of explains the crazy eyes but yeah phenomenal experience um, but I mean unfortunately I didn't really get the opportunity to sort of say never again because I've uh, signed myself up for another five this year so So yeah, I mean, aside from the case of the runs that I had at Creepops, there really hasn't been too many injuries or illnesses to worry about this year. I'm quite fortunate. But it hasn't really been without the hiccups this year. There's um, been three races which have been cancelled for various different reasons. Um, the first one of which was the Robert Valley 10k. Uh, that was cancelled because of heavy snow. The park just was closed for the entire weekend because it was just impossible to get cars down there, so they just decided it was unsafe for runners. It, it was later rearranged, but I couldn't make the rearranged date, so that was race one. Race two was a bit different. It was the Woodhall Spa 10k. Um, I was all signed up, all ready, turned up to the race. When I got there, I was running a little bit late, still before the start of the race. Um, but when I got to the hall to collect my number, I found out that they sold it on to someone else, as is their policy, apparently. So, yeah, that was a bit frustrating. Uh, race 3, uh, that was the Humber Bridge 10k, which was a couple of weeks ago, and if you follow my blog or follow me Twitter or Facebook, you'll know why. If you don't, um, I had to take Jenny to A&E on the Sunday, because she got a case of eczema hepaticum, which is basically just an uber nasty version of the cold sore, specifically for eczema sufferers where the infection just spreads wherever the eczema is. It it can be can be da very very dangerous really uh, potentially fatal if it's not treated. This is the seventh time that Jenny's had it, but it, this time it's far far worse than anything we've seen before. Um, the, 
the rate at which it was spreading was just terrific. So obviously, I had to change the plan for that weekend, and then, yeah, six days later, she finally came out of hospital. Not good. Um, there's, there's sort of quite a few races to look forward to this year. Um, sort of the big ones, the Great North Run, the Yorkshire Marathon, Robin Hood Marathon. Uh, they're sort of the main ones I'm looking forward to, obviously. There's there's a Great South Run in October, I think, um, down in Portsmouth. That'd be nice. Just to change the scenery, really. A lot of my runs have taken place around Lincolnshire, around Nottinghamshire and Norfolk. So to get quite a distance away from them would be quite good. Um, well, so sort of next month I've also... I've got two races potentially in the same day. I've got Robert Valley 10k in the morning and then Sheffield Man of Steel race, I think it's called, later in the afternoon. It was... I'd always sort of had half an eye on both races without any intention of doing them. Sort of doing both. Um, but when I realised that it was at a different time and it was possible, I'd just... Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of instances this year where I'm running multiple races in a weekend. There's been... There's a week in May, sorry, where there's the, um, the Skelly Six on the Friday evening, followed by the Zombie Run on Saturday afternoon, and then the Sheffield Half Marathon on Sunday. Um, somehow managed to get a PB on that Sheffield Half Marathon, despite not actually trying to run that past. Even managed a negative split, which is potentially also the first time I've done that, so I don't quite know how. Um, maybe there's a secret in running all the time. I mean, I've kind of got a nice idea in my head at the minute to kind of bookend the year by running the uh, Liver Bird double marathon, or rather just the first day of the Liver Bird double marathon, so the uh, 31st of December in Liverpool, obviously. Um, I think purely because I started the, the start of the year with the um, New Year's Day 10k in Cleebobs, to finish it the last day of the year with a marathon would be quite a nice little symmetry. Although not quite obviously symmetrical, but you know what I mean. Be good. I haven't really given it much thought more than the idea that it'd be nice. So I mean it very much depends on the state I'm in. The way it's going at the minute I probably won't even need to run the race to re reach the distance, but even if I crawl over the line I think just just to sort of go out on a high really, it'd be good. I think a favourite medal, um, it's a close one so far, I think obviously the London Marathon one means a lot, but just in terms of the actual design, I mean the Lincoln 10k one always takes some beating. It's Pretty awesome. So yeah, I mean, I've been doing quite a bit this year to put myself around and get myself noticed, get my name out there, get my face out there. Um, I was quite surprised when I received the March edition of the uh, Exmoor Society magazine when I saw this on it. <laughs> Big old picture on my face. Um, there's been quite a few other newspaper coverage that I've got. There's been this this piece before the uh, King's End 10k the other month. And then just a few other little bits here and there, really. Um, sort of quite a big bit in one of the local papers. Uh, there we go. And then that. Same photo, same reporter, really, but a different newspaper. Um, also managed to be on the radio, I think it's about three or four times now. Um, 
First time was quite nervous, quite weird. Jenny was there with me. Uh, and yeah, there's a few interesting stats as such. I think I've only lost the one toenail so far, so that's quite good. And um, there's been a few warnings that, and a few sort of false alarms with that, but for the most part, it's just the one. Um, I've been punched in the nuts by one zombie. Um, that's gonna be the only time it happens this year. I hope. <laughs> if it doesn't, then something's gone drastically wrong somewhere, and yeah. Um, and there's quite a few other interesting stats and such so far. I mean, I've travelled over 300 miles so far this year. No, I haven't. I've spent over 300 pounds on entry fees so far this year, which I probably shouldn't tell Jenny. Um, and then there's also been other things. I think I've eaten over 250 bananas. Seems a lot, but I don't even think it's two a day, which is quite a surprise for me. I think it's been a few days where I've been on a bit of a banana shortage and energy levels have slumped. Um, yeah, I think, hang on. Yeah, over 2,000 miles, I think. Um, hang on. Yeah, 2,190 miles of travel so far this year. So yeah, that's quite, <laughs> quite a lot, given that I've only ran... 500k, so I've done a lot of sitting in cars and very little running in comparison. Um, So, I mean, the race, the race last Saturday was kind of the 21st race so far this year. I think, I think it was 24th week. So, I mean, I'm, I'm hitting quite a good one race a week, nearly-ish. Um, so, yeah. But, it's not really about trying to hit a race every week. Obviously, it's nice. It's what I kind of want to run. The, the bigger the races are run, the more races are run. I feel the more attention I'm bringing into it rather than just going out and doing solo runs. I mean, they're very much just a last case thing, really. Um, if I have to do a solo run, I have to do a solo run. If I can run a, a real race, I run a real race. I mean, I do it at Academy tomorrow. I've got my 22nd race of the year, which is 10k. Um, I'm not actually sure where that is. Might need to check that before I leave tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, and then I think on Sunday I've potentially got another race, which is another 10k near Nottingham. I mean, I try and fit in as many races as I can. There's obviously certain limitations, distance, time, um, cost, that kind of thing. But, but as I said, the more races I run, the field it brings a lot more legitimacy to the sort of challenge. I mean, there's no rules as such, I'm kind of making it up as I go along. But, I mean, the bigger races, the more I can do, the more people notice me. The more I enjoy it, the more other people I think are more willing to sponsor me, so I do what I can. So yeah, I think that's sort of all I wanted to say really. Um, it's kind of the third day I've tried to record this video. Um, keep getting put off by either how big my face looks or how sort of scary and intense my eyes look. Um, and I haven't really known what I wanted to say. I've kind of just been making it up as I go along, recording bits, cancelling it. But yeah, I mean, the main thing is just thanks, really, to everyone that sponsored me. I said it at the beginning, I said it again now. The response has been incredible. Um, I mean, I'm 520 kilometers in, got another 480 to go. So I'm just going to keep on running. So if you can keep chucking your pennies my way, that'd be great. Thanks.